This question is actually a little bit of a delicate question because Jews do accept that with the sin of Adam, a certain negativity was brought into the nature of man which makes man more prone to sin and more prone to rebellion against God. But on the other hand, in a certain sense, this is probably one of the most significant differences between Judaism and Christianity. Because Christianity believes that man is intrinsically evil and he's incapable of being good only with some outside intervention. But Judaism believes that no, God already planted within man goodness and greatness and godliness and that is the true nature of man and the evil side of man is not his true nature. The Medrash tells us as follows. Our father Abraham, when he interceded for the people of Sodom, the people of Sodom were wicked and evil. So wicked and so evil that ultimately the merciful God had to destroy them. But Abraham stepped up and asked God and beseeched God that he not destroy them. Abraham said, perhaps there are ten righteous people in the city and God do not destroy the city if there are ten righteous people in the city. And God actually agreed to Abraham. He said, if there would be ten righteous people in the city, I will not destroy the city. And the Medrash goes ahead and tells us it's because of this prayer of Abraham that God chose Abraham. Not necessarily the prayer itself, but the concept, because God chose Abraham before he actually prayed this prayer. But the concept and the theory and the motivation behind the prayer was the reason that God chose Abraham. But what is the motivation behind this prayer? Why was Abraham praying for such an evil city, such a corrupt city? And why is it that God chose Abraham on the basis of this prayer? And the answer is as follows. Abraham believed in the goodness of man. Abraham believed that if these people would have a good example, they would have 10 righteous people, they could turn around. Maybe it will take a long time, but they could turn around because every human being is created in the image of God. Every human being has godliness inherent in his very nature. And God, Abraham trusted in God's plan that godliness will be brought out of humanity. Humanity will one day turn to God. And God trusted in that. God, that was God's plan for humanity. That was Abraham's trust in that plan. When God looked down on earth and he saw how is it going to be that my plan is going to be achieved, he saw there was one man that already believed in his plan. Abraham already believed in God's plan to turn humanity around. Abraham already had it in his mind that if there's going to be a group of people that will serve as an example, humanity will turn around. God said, that's the man that believes in my, in my plan. That is my man. In other words, it was Abraham's belief in the goodness of man, Abraham's belief in the capability of man for attaining godliness in a human context that God chose him. Not only that, but Abraham's argument with God, after God tells him, I'm going to destroy the city. Where did Abraham have the audacity to argue with God? God said, I'm going to destroy the city. Why didn't Abraham say, God, you're, you're the boss? That's it. Why did the argument go any further? It's because Abraham, in his heart, sensed that if there are ten righteous people in the city, it will be unjust to destroy them. And he realized that that sense of injustice that's in his heart is not something bad, but rather something good and godly, and it's something that God wants him to follow, obey, and direct his life according to that sense. It's, again, it's Abraham's belief in the godliness that's inherent in the human soul, the godliness that God planted in the soul of every human being that brought about God's choice of Abraham, and that is simply why we cannot believe in the concept of original sin. We cannot believe that man is utterly evil, utterly bad. On the contrary, we believe that man is godly and good, even though it might be hidden under a veneer of evil.